Okay, so, uh, so what are the positives and negatives? Why would you and would you not uh, use decision trees? So the biggest, uh, the biggest advantage is they are interpretable. Uh, once you build them, you can actually say why something is classified positive or uh, negative. <coughs> Uh, they're very good at handling irrelevant attributes. So if you stuff lots of if you stuff lots of noise in the data, decision tree is very good at ignoring noise because noise usually has zero gain. So it will just focus on the other attributes and just and ignore the noise. Um, it can handle missing data. It also is very compact as far as representation. So this matters if you need to run something quickly, right? If you need to build a system that needs to work in real time, uh, decision trees are a good choice because they're very compact. They take very uh, little memory uh, because after pruning, usually the number of nodes in the decision tree is a lot smaller than the number of attributes uh, in the data set. And it's very fast at testing time. It's, it's, it's the fastest algorithm that we'll cover in this course. It's basically proportional to the depth of the tree. <coughs> So what are the disadvantages? It only, uh, when, when you're dealing with numeric data, it can only do uh, access aligned splits. It cannot do oblique splits of the data. So if you have a data set like that, right, and you're trying to separate the blue from the yellow, right, um, so some other algorithms that we'll cover in a couple of lectures, like regression, they'll just be able to draw a boundary like that and, and with a single stroke separate one class from another. Uh, decision trees cannot do that. What decision trees will do is they will start introducing thresholds, and they introduce thresholds on each axis individually. So what that means is they'll put a threshold like that, right? So that'll be one subset, that'll be another subset. And then, of course, this one is impure, this one is impure, so it, it starts splitting again. And it's hard because you can only draw vertical lines and horizontal lines. That's what happens when you consider one attribute at a time. If you can only split on one attribute, this means it's a vertical line or a horizontal line. So it'll maybe split like that, like that, and just keep splitting and splitting and splitting. And overall, it's, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll take a while for it to get the same separation that uh, uh, a regression algorithm or even naive Bayes could get uh, very quickly. Now, why is that bad? That's bad for the overfitting reasons. Because to get that separation, you need a tree with lots and lots of nodes. And we know that trees with lots of nodes overfit to the data. So we're going to go back and start pruning it. And as soon as we start pruning it, you know, we'll end up with something like that. And that's not really a great way to separate the data. Okay. So, so that's, really the, um, that's really a problem. Also, the algorithm is greedy. It might not find the best possible tree. Because remember, you're picking the best attribute now with the current set. You're not looking five steps into the future down the tree and figuring out what is the best attribute now for five steps later. You're looking one step ahead. Uh, so you might not find the optimal tree, and there are exponentially many trees. So it's, it's, a, it's a big search space. OK, um, now um, decision forests. This is an adaptation of uh, decision trees that tries to fix many of the problems. And it fixes them in a very strange way that seems totally counterintuitive, but it works. Um, so the idea in a decision forest is instead of growing a single tree, you grow a bunch. You grow a bunch of different trees. And the way you do that is you take your set of training examples, you randomly split it up into k different sets, and for each set of training examples, you learn the full depth ID3 tree. So you don't, you, don't, you don't do any sort of pruning. You learn the full tree that will perfectly separate the data. But there is a catch. You don't do it on the full set of attributes. You do it on a subset of examples, and you also do it on a subset of attributes. So uh, let's say you, you pick just the, just the rain, and you train a tree based on just the rain. It's not much of a tree, but it, it is something. Right? Uh, <coughs> Uh, and, then, and then you repeat that for each one of the sets. As a result, you end up with k different trees. Each tree separates its training data perfectly, and each tree also looks at different attributes in the data. And then at prediction time, what you do is you take your new data point, you classify it using all the k trees that you have, and then you use the majority vote. So you try to look at their agreement. So you know, did, did, did eight out of 10 trees think that John will play? If yes, then you say yes. So um, it's, a, it's a strange algorithm, but it turns out to be a uh, state of the art for many different uh, mm -hmm. domains. Uh, so. <coughs> All right. 
So let's, uh, let's summarize uh, where we are. So we talked about the ID3 algorithm. The basic idea is you start with a root node and you start splitting data and grow the tree down. You pick the attributes to split on greedily using information gain. Uh, and information gain is basically uh, the way to think about this is it's the difference in the uncertainty before you did the split and after you did the split. Um, so uh, it does overfit the data and the way you deal with overfitting is by post pruning and for that you need to separate your data into a training portion and a validation portion and then keep pruning until the validation uh, performance gets better. Um, <coughs> and. Uh, um, I guess it's, it's really hard to quantify what the decision tree does. It is an incremental algorithm, but the way to think about this is uh, it does have a complete hypothesis space, so it enumerates over, all, over the power set of all attributes, attribute values uh, in a way. Uh, so it can always separate the data, and it does have a preference for putting high gain attributes at the top. Right? So that's, that's why the bias towards selecting uh, attributes that have lots and lots of values and result lots of uh, in lots of tiny, uh, tiny subsets. Um, it's fast. It doesn't take much memory, and you can you can actually say what it means.